Hey everybody, welcome to Jamie Riddler Studios, where creativity comes to life. I am your host, Jamie Riddler, and I am here to encourage you to open up your creative heart and to experience the joy of making collage. So today, I am going to share with you a whole bunch of tools and materials that you can use to get started with collage. But here's something that I want you to know first, and this is a basic principle at the studio. That is, start where you are with what you have. You can get started with just some images you like, some paper or your journal, and something to glue with. That's it. That's all you need to get yourself started on a great collage adventure. Now, I love collage so much that I recently got over the intimidation barrier of going to art school so that I could take a four-day collage intensive at the Toronto School of Art. And I want to share with you what I learned about materials and tools so that maybe you too can get a little less intimidated about embracing your creativity and your art. Here we go. So let's look at some of the implements we can use if we want to cut our collage pieces. I just used a basic pair of scissors that I have had for years that I have around. I use these for everything. I use these for dream boards um, and I use these for my collages. Of course, you could get finer scissors if you want to do finer detail, but I find these awesome. I just love them. But after using them for a while for finer detail, I realized that it would also be smart to have a X-Acto knife of some kind. I started with one of these. They're pretty inexpensive, pretty easy to find. And the thing that I like about this is it's good and strong. And uh, But I did find that I wanted to work even finer, and so I went out and invested in... I love this. It's shiny and pretty as well <laughs> as useful, and it's just... Uh, a metallic and stronger straight edge and so I really enjoyed using that for more details and also for longer straight lines. Uh, if you're going to use an edge like this it's really helpful to have something like this which is called a self healing mat and they come in all kinds of sizes little ones that make it easy for you to carry around bigger ones like the one I have here or ones that are big enough to actually fill almost your entire desk I went for a size that I still found transportable but also that was as least as big as a magazine image because that is what I cut so often for cutting when I was in class I just used whatever uh, clear ruler that um, the instructor had on a hand. The advantage of clear is you can really get a sense of where you are on the page, but the disadvantage is that when you use something like this, it will cut into the edge of the plastic pretty easily. And so that's why generally if I'm using one of these, I have a metal ruler that I like to use. Uh, I have a large one and I have a small one. If you're going to be doing some detailed cutting, you might end up feeling like one of the things you want to do is measure. So that means having a pencil and probably a smart idea to have an eraser too. Another important part of collaging is, of course, adhesive. Now, to be honest, generally all I use is a regular glue stick. It's easy, it's affordable, it's accessible just about everywhere. I tend to use the Yoohoo brand, but this Elmer's worked really great, and it was a gift from my sister Shannon. She put it in my first day of art school kit, and I'm so glad because I ran out of mine ever so quickly. <laughs> The other thing we used in class was this matte medium, and I have to tell you, I loved it. I have taken lots of classes online where they have recommended using gel medium for adhering things, and I've just never liked it. I haven't liked the texture. I found that it put too much wave in the paper, but the matte medium worked just great. One of the things our instructor told us is really important when working with the medium is to keep it very clean. Put it in a separate container, use a brush that's dedicated to this, and you can see here's a collage that I did using the matte medium. And one of the effects that I really liked was that this is on top of a shiny magazine image and it just matted it down and made it feel much more at one 
with the rest of the composition. So this I really enjoyed using and I would recommend it. So basically for me, if you've got the glue stick and you've got the matte medium, you are good to go. Uh, to use the matte medium, I went to the dollar store and I just bought some cheap brushes and they work just fine, but then I ended up investing in just a little bit nicer a brush, a little bit bigger. Um, in part because I wanted to keep this really pure and also if you go too cheap with a brush then sometimes they lose their hairs and I really wanted to make sure that what I was working on would well that that wouldn't happen. I also found that these foam brushes worked just great. Unfortunately my kittens have decided they really like these too so I'm finding them all over the house. <laughs> And that's really all you need, but I thought I'd share another couple of tools that came in super, super handy. When you're using all this glue, inevitably, if you're like me, you get in there with your finger and you start working things in. Uh, and when you do, sticky fingers. And so again, my sister Shannon popped these wet wipes into my first day of art school kit, which are awesome. And another thing you can do is just have some wet paper towel close by. And as your fingers get stickier, you can just wash them off quickly and get back to work. Now, if it turns out that you don't always love using your fingers to press down, one of the things you can use is a bone folder. Um, I'd be more like, I wouldn't use this myself if I was using a medium, but if I'd put something on with the glue, this is a great way to really push down and get rid of any air bubbles and make sure that it lies flat. But honestly, a lot of times what I've used is the edge of my scissors. So I decided also because I really was discovering how much I love collage, I went out and bought myself a brayer so that I could see how I felt about using it. I haven't tried it out yet, but I definitely know it's a potential kit for helping really uh, smooth out anything that you're gluing down. So when you're collaging, you're also going to need something to collage onto. For our class, the teacher recommended we work with Bristol paper. Now Bristol boards also what I use whenever I create a dream board, which I do every month under the full moon. I love it, but this is the first time I had bought a pad and I really enjoyed working with it because it is so smooth and it's also heavy enough that it kept its shape when I put images on it. It was really fun to work with. I did some geometric work on it and used it. It was a great foundation for practicing and learning about collage. We also bought some 140 pound cold press watercolor paper and we bought a large piece 22 inches by 30 inches but I ended up really enjoying cutting it down into a smaller piece and using it. It's got a great weight to it so this stayed nice and solid and of course because you're dealing with watercolor paper if you wanted to you could paint this and work with it that way adding color to your collage and we'll talk a little bit more about that later. Another thing we did that was really fun was that we used fabric as a background for materials we could collage on. We This is a, a picture that I created in my art journal and I printed it onto Avery photo transfer paper that can be then ironed on to fabric, which I have done with this. And I just love it. I haven't figured out what I am going to use it for, but I am particularly fond of it on this paper that I created myself in the class. I just, I love how the colors go together. I love the sort of whimsical, happy background that's a little bit subtle, and then this totally non-subtle kind of cat bear, uh, and I'm looking forward to figuring out how I can bring these together. And that takes us really nicely into collage materials because you can see this this becomes uh, the fabric becomes the ground on which we're working the support but this whole piece becomes collage material and same thing here we've built some paper and, and uh, it, this was done with oil pastel for a resist and then some watercolors in purple and yellow and this has become something that could be a support to be collaged on or it could be turned into collaged pieces. So let's talk about the kinds of things we can collage with. 
For many of us, especially those of us who make dream boards on a regular basis, what we're most familiar with collaging with is magazine images. I always have piles of magazines available to do this with, including, yes, I do cut up my National Geographic, and in part because I know a part of my artistic imagination is really excited by images of animals, and this is such a great place to get them. You can also get images from catalogs, from calendars. I always keep my calendars. This is one of my favorite images. I have loved it since I first saw it in 2013. Uh, here's another image I really want to work with that is from a calendar. Also, one of the things I did immediately because I was feeling so inspired was I went to Value Village and picked up some secondhand books. I have a great love of images that are mythical. And so kids' books that are filled with fairy tale type images are a real treat and treasure for me. Even sometimes these are fun to look at just for color stories, just to look at what are the color combinations that grab your eye and your attention. I love the idea of taking like this. You can see I've already started working with this, this little cat. <laughs> I just love the idea of collaging that onto something, so I can't wait to do that. I've also bought not just little kid books, but also big kid books. I really often love having a figure of some sort in my collages, a, a woman, a, a what you might call a hero image as a focal point. And so this great book about the little black dress provides all sorts of wonderful images. This was funny because it actually had come across my path when I <laughs> was in collage class too. And this was in fact an example of one of things we did to create images to collage with. And a really fun thing we did was to get some, what used to be called rice paper, what I believe is called juan paper, and created all sorts of little details by doing rubbings, which is also called frittage. And what was amazing is this one I created, I'm looking forward to using it in a collage in the future. This was literally my necklace. And so I love that it has that personal association with me, and it was a brand new idea for me that we could literally create the papers with which we might then create collage. So that was really exciting. You of course use pages from books and you don't have to use them as is. This has a wash of color over it and also I did some scribbling with oil pastel. I'm going to talk a little bit more about those kinds of things in a moment. And also music. This actually meant so much to me when I came across it in the class. I'm really looking forward to using it in a piece because I recognize the words right away. Snow. May you bloom and grow. Bloom and grow forever. And that's from Edelweiss, which is actually the song that my brother and sisters and I sang to my mom on the night that she passed away. So it's so meaningful and um, I'm excited about using it in collage. So just before we wrap up, I want to share with you a few special things that you can add in as extras if it feels like fun to you. So I know that many of us uh, sometimes get into collage because it's more accessible than painting or drawing. It's a little bit less intimidating than starting from total scratch or using materials that you just feel overwhelmed by. I mean, most of us have used scissors, most of us have used glue, but all of these things can add another dimension to your collaging and to your experimentation and learning. So don't be scared. <laughs> and it's one of the reasons why I just wanted to share this with you a little bit so that I could help you maybe get over the intimidation factor a little bit. Uh, so one thing you can use as a part of your collage, especially if you're using that watercolor paper, is paints. And what I did was I went out and bought this set of sort of student grade five basics acrylics. 
It's black and white and the primaries blue, magenta, and yellow. From this, you can create purple, you can create green, you can create orange, you can create all sorts of colors. If you give yourself the chance to play and say, oh, what's it gonna look like if I put these together? And what's it gonna look like if I'm gonna put these together? And this can bring a whole new level of fun, especially if you want to experiment with this whole idea of making your own papers. You know, I did this and honestly, all I used, did was basically stamping and um, dragging and playing around. And I just did these little pieces so again, they wouldn't be intimidating. I would just try and say, oh, I wonder what that'll look like if I put it together. Look around at your house and look for things you might stamp with. It's a very unintimidating way to get started with painting. And you know I'm all about unintimidating. Now, you know, if you're gonna work with paint, you'll probably want a few brushes. And that is overwhelming too. <laughs> And I just found that I wanted to start with one bigger brush and one littler brush. That's all I had. These are old, they're from my mom, uh, so I can't tell you much about them, but I did just find that having one larger and one smaller was enough to get me started. If you don't know if you're gonna like this, I recommend just buying a hack of student grade brushes and discovering what you like. And you know, if you don't like it all, then no big loss. And if you do, you can figure out which ones you might want to invest more in. One of the things I also really liked working with, and this surprised the heck out of me, because again, I'm intimidated by drawing, is this graphite. And mostly I just used it as a, a, a rubbing. It's definitely one of the things that is used here in the background. I just put it on something that had a texture and rubbed it. In this instance, I was able to explore this tool at the school in the class because they had a bunch of it. And I was like, you know what? I kind of like it. So I went out and spent a buck and a bit on one for myself. We also use these watercolored crayons and they are a whole bunch of fun. You can just create a line, a shape, a wiggle, and then take a brush with some water and just Again, I find them a very unintimidating place to start. One of the things that's fun was working with these oil pastels because they serve as a resist to paint. And what that means was if we put it on paper, wherever we put the pastels, the paint wouldn't sink in. And you can kind of see it on this. I use some white to just do some scribbles and then I went over it with pretty watery blue and pretty watery magenta. It was so sort of pretty and bright and little girl bedroom that I went over the whole thing with the graphite. And even though I don't think it looks uh, very nice, I, there's lots of things I can appreciate it. This is one of the joys of collage is finding like little things in it, little moments, little vignettes in the piece that you might like to use for something else. Or this gut rip, if I just end up ripping it, uh, you know, I can use it and maybe I'll find a way that I end up just loving the impact of this built up paper that I created myself. Here's one more thing I want to share with you if you ever decide to take a class like this or to collage on the go. It was really useful to me to have an organized way to carry this all with me. So first I had this handy dandy courier bag that says on it happy first day of art school thanks to my sister shannon hey shannon <laughs> who filled this up with me with some basic supplies including treats and granola bars which were a lifesaver so thanks for that shannon i kept in this all of my wet materials my paints and my matte medium and anything that was super big then I had a smaller pencil case that I kept my tools in, like the knife, the cutting exacto knife, my smaller ruler, a pencil eraser, uh, my bone folder, so that everything was in one place. And then I also found I needed a larger tote bag. And of course I wanted to pick one that I liked. I got this at a garage sale recently and I just find it so much fun and it had to be big enough to hold the pad of Bristol paper and also the self-healing mat. With these things and my regular bag I was organized and ready to go 
to art school. And one of the things I really found when I was putting all my things together, and you can apply this whether you're going off to school, going to create outside, or just creating at your kitchen table, that there was power in the ritual of putting everything together, of getting all the supplies in one place and even placing them just so, creating, I enjoyed creating a little vignette for myself that made me feel like my inner artist was alive. So that's a little bonus tip for you. I hope it touches you the way it touched me. Have fun and get out there creating. <laughs> my goodness, it is hot in the studio. <laughs>